Hey everyone! Whenever I'm feeling down, I like to remind myself that I'm unique, just like everybody else. <laughs> okay, bad joke, but seriously, even though most of the genome is identical between different people, there are certainly some differences. DNA profiling takes advantage of these differences, allowing us to create unique DNA profiles, which are going to be the focus of this video. Yep, I promise it's in the syllabus. You can check the points out beneath the video if you like. So in this one, we'll ease into it with a general explanation of what DNA profiling is. Then we'll look at the steps in DNA profiling by breaking it down into the two main ways a DNA profile can be constructed either using an electrophoresis gel or capillary electrophoresis, just like DNA sequencing. As for the applications, so how we can use DNA profiles to solve crimes and figure out who someone's father is, we'll save them for another lesson. For now, let's get into what DNA profiles are. As we touched on before, DNA profiling refers to the process of analysing a person's DNA for variations, so that we can identify them. DNA sequences, which are usually different in different people, are referred to as genetic markers, and since we know exactly where they are on the chromosome, they can be used to construct DNA profiles. The most commonly used genetic markers are short tandem repeats, which we refer to as STRs for short. STRs consist of a string of repeating nucleotide units that are usually two to five bases long. For example, CGA, 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 CGA is an STR where the repeating unit is CGA and it's repeated five times. Now, there are actually lots of different STRs consisting of different repeating units repeated different numbers of times in different places in the genome. But if we focus on just a single STR, the one we were using earlier with the CGA repeat, even though everyone has the same repeating unit, CGA, in the same place in the genome, the number of CGA repeats within an STR varies between different people. For example, these people have two, five, and three repeats. The result is that their STRs have different lengths in terms of the number of base pairs. Now, don't worry, since STRs are actually non-coding DNA, so they're not involved in protein production or anything, these differences have no impact on a person's health. But as I said earlier, these differences in length are useful for making DNA profiles. But how do we do this? Well, one kind of DNA profile is produced using gel electrophoresis. Firstly, we collect a DNA sample. This might be hair, saliva, blood, etc. Basically, anything which contains cells which contain DNA. Secondly, we extract the DNA from our sample. In this step, chemicals such as detergents are added to break open the cells and separate the DNA from other cell components, like proteins, for example. Now we've extracted our DNA, we use PCR to amplify the DNA of up to 13 different STR regions from the sample. Now, obviously, making a profile with 13 STRs might be a little complicated for us newbies. So to get our heads around it, we'll just analyze one STR, the one with the five CGA repeats we were looking at earlier. The way we ensure that we just amplify the STR is by using primers which specifically bind to the DNA on each side of the STR. DNA polymerase binds to the primers and synthesizes copies of the fragments so that if we perform the PCR reaction for long enough, we end up with thousands of copies. Before we move on to the next step, I want to flag something to you. Now remember, everyone inherits their DNA from their parents. The result? Every person has two alleles or versions of each SDR since they inherit one from each parent. Let's say the person we took our sample from has two different alleles for this SDR, one with five repeats and one with two. Since these SDRs are found at the same place on a chromosome, the same primer will flank both of the alleles and amplify them since the DNA on either side will be the same. 
Now, the amplified fragments are separated by gel electrophoresis. Again, we look at gel electrophoresis in depth in another video. For now, just keep in mind that we use it to separate the fragments according to their size. The larger fragments, so the ones with more repeats, will stay near the wells, whilst the smaller fragments, so the ones with fewer repeats, migrate through the gel faster and further. The resulting pattern of bands on the electrophoresis gel, that is, the number of bands and their locations, creates a unique DNA profile. So, by comparing to a DNA ladder, we can determine how many repeats there are. Now, analyzing a single STR obviously isn't going to be enough to make a unique DNA profile, simply because there'd be heaps of people with the same number of repeats for just one STR. In reality, a full DNA profile has 13 SDRs, and the result would look something like this. Kind of crazy, yes, but now hopefully you'll realize how different these can look between different people. We'll look at how to interpret a DNA profile kind of like this one in another lesson. Before then, we need to cover the other kind of DNA profile, which is made using capillary electrophoresis. The first few steps are the same. We collect a DNA sample, and then we extract the DNA. Again, we use PCR to amplify the SDRs. The big difference is that this time we use fluorescent primers. Since the primers are incorporated into the SDR copies, this means that every SDR copy will have fluorescent tags. Now, we have a second difference. To separate the fragments, we use capillary electrophoresis instead. We go over capillary electrophoresis in more depth in the DNA sequencing video. But in summary, the shorter fragments move quickly through the pores of the gel, while long fragments move more slowly. As each fragment crosses the finish line at the end of the tube, it's illuminated by a laser, allowing the attached fluorescent dye to be detected to produce a graph called an electrotherogram. The resulting pattern of peaks, so the number of peaks and their locations, creates a DNA profile. Just like gel electrophoresis, we can figure out the number of repeats in a peak by running a fluorescent DNA ladder. Now again, we only did analysis on a single STR. Usually to create a DNA profile, we would analyze a set of STRs. Again, we'll save the applications for another lesson. All right, for now, let's wrap up. In summary, DNA profiling refers to the process of analyzing a person's DNA for variations so that we can identify them. The genetic markers most commonly used to construct a DNA profile are short tandem repeats. STRs are short, non-coding regions of DNA which consist of a string of repeating nucleotide units. The number of repeats within an STR varies between different people and we can use these differences in length to create unique DNA profiles. The creation of a DNA profile involves collecting and extracting DNA from a sample before using PCR with primers which flank the SDR region to amplify the SDRs. These fragments are then run through either an electrophoresis or capillary gel so that we can separate them according to size and determine their length. That's it for this video everyone. You should totally check out the video on the applications of DNA profiling in order to make sure you're getting everything you need for your exams. See you there.